Konnichiwa, and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The G20 comes to Japan this week. The president arriving with the rest of the world leaders. We'll be interviewing him at the end of the week, and we'll bring that to you when we do. But first, a remarkable media story we want to bring you tonight. There was joy in newsrooms across America last week when a 75-year-old writer for Elle magazine called E.G. Carroll came forward to accuse the president of sexually assaulting her. Carol made serious claims, but they were confusing. She says that sometime in 1995 or 1996, she doesn't remember the year exactly, Donald Trump groped her in a New York City department store. Somehow the two wound up together in a dressing room. Carol decided to model lingerie for Trump, a full lace outfit, she says. And then the assault took place. That's her story. Carol says she was devastated by what happened, but she did not report it to law enforcement for some reason, nor did she write about it, though she is a writer, during Trump's presidential campaign or for the last two and a half years of his presidency. Instead, she waited nearly a quarter century to include the story in a book that's literally entitled, What Do We Need Men For? In that book, by the way, Carol also accuses CBS head Les Moonves of sexual assault. She writes that Moonves attacked her in an elevator in Los Angeles after she'd finished interviewing him for a piece in Esquire magazine. And yet, amazingly, she never mentioned the attack in the story that she wrote about Moonves. Both Trump and Les Moonves, by the way, deny that any of this ever happened, and there's no corroborating evidence that it did. And yet, according to The Atlantic and HuffPo and Stephen Colbert and countless other arbiters of American news, Carol's, Carol's allegation against the president, which is a felony, is, quote, credible. It's a credible accusation. Harvard graduate Lawrence O'Donnell was so impressed by it that he gave Carol half his show. Come on. This is absurd. These aren't serious statements from a rape victim. They are wacky sound bites from someone trying to sell a book, obviously. Last night on CNN, even Anderson Cooper appeared to realize the media were being had in this story. As Cooper tried to interview E. Jean Carroll, she suddenly launched into a bizarre digression in which she described rape as, quote, sexy. <laughs> We're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick break. <laughs> can you imagine that was you? How's that for the weirdest exchange of the week? You can see Cooper desperately trying to dump out into a commercial break when your star witness starts rambling on about rape fantasies. It's time to shut the whole thing down before it undermines your case. And they're making a case. Asking questions might reveal the truth, and of course that is literally the last thing they want to happen ever. Joining us with reaction. Uh, other breaking news that we have, Robert Mueller has agreed to testify pursuant to a subpoena. Fox News correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera, former Secret Service agent and Fox News contributor Dan Bongino. Dan, I don't think we can go back to Geraldo on Tehran because I think we both, you know, love him so much that, <laughs> that we may end up having a brawl if possible the next time we see each other, which is not true. Um, but in all seriousness, um, let's start with Mueller. Mueller was clear. The AG was clear. Mueller's report on the issue of collusion, conspiracy, that was the fourth time we heard no. Now the Democrats want a fifth bite at the apple. Now they're harassing and abusing their power. They're harassing the office of the president. This is an oversight. This is now trying and harass the president time. And more importantly, the AG said that decision is determined by him, Rod Rosenstein, and even the office of legal counsel weighed in. No obstruction. Yeah. And so I guess the yeah. question here is, Mueller has said, I'm just going to tell you what's in the report again and again and again. So why? Well, this may be a golden opportunity. Well, well, number one, why is it good? Nadler's not really that bright, Sean. Nadler screwed this thing up from the start. Uh, you know, from bringing in people from the Nixon era who proceeded to humiliate themselves in front of congressional hearings to asking Hope Kip Hicks, calling her Mrs. Lewandowski. Nadler's humiliated himself, and believe me, the Democrats know this. Why are they doing this? Because Nadler's running it horribly. But here's the key question. This is why it's going to blow up in their face. One Republican, I'm sure, is going to ask Mueller the key question. When exactly did you know the collusion fairy tale was a hoax? And the answer, if Mueller's going to be honest, is the day I hired Andrew Weissman. Because Andrew Weissman, Sean, was briefed a year earlier, 2016, on the providence of, of the 2016. Dossier. His pit bull, his number one guy. Yes. Oh, by right. the way, he, he was at Hillary's victory hoax. party. Well, Robert Mueller's statement that then Attorney General Barr and the special counsel's office had to clean up badly. And I think, frankly, the attorney general threw Mueller a lifeline because he didn't remember what he said or he didn't write it or he doesn't know, which is even worse. Um, 
why do I suspect this is not going to go well for him at all? It isn't. We're going back down memory lane. You know, Nadler and Schiff remind me of high school athletes. Uh, they graduated from high school. Now nobody recognizes them. They're, they're uh, offended that they're outside the mainstream of public consciousness now. Nobody knows who they are or what they are doing. We've, they've been forgotten. So they are desperately questing for attention. They're dragging back Robert Mueller. Robert Mueller has already told them in no uncertain terms that his testimony will stick exactly to the, to the Mueller report. It's there all in writing, and people are truly interested in it. I am interested in the conclusion. The conclusion said there is no collusion that the president of the United States is not a traitor to the United States. The president of the United States is not a spy for Vladimir Putin. The president of the United States has been wrongly accused over two and a half years. He's had his administration just so bothered, so harassed by these political operatives, and yet well, he has still managed more or less to be successful.